Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you Corbo versus Ehrman in round one of the fourth Asia Pacific tournament. So today uh, we're going to be seeing Point de Hoc and on the Axis side Corbo is going to be using the third Fallschirmjäger and Ehrman is using the 12th SS Panzer. So interesting choices for the tournament because obviously they have to consistently use these divisions throughout the entire thing. So third Fallschirmjäger, it's very good on on like a certain amount of maps, but I feel like there are some pretty dreadful maps for the third Fallschirmjäger. So Corbo is definitely going to have to control that with the sort of pick and ban map phase. Um, which is in this tournament. I don't think I referred to it last time, but before the games, um, there's a like a dice roll or whatever, and um, the player who wins picks the map, I think, and then the other person bans two maps. So depending on whether or not you get to pick the map or ban the maps, I think picking the map's probably a, a, an advantage, especially for like the third Volschmierger, for example, with Corbo. On the side of Uermen, the 12th SS Panzer is actually a really nice choice. I would, I quite like this choice for 1v1s um, and just throughout the tournament because it's a rather versatile division. Like it relies on quite heavy units like the Boyd Firefly and the Cromwell, but without using those, the division is still strong and can suit multiple terrains. So that's really nice. And also, like even though it doesn't have a lot of availability because the map's smaller, you can still get away with playing that division quite well on multiple maps. So that's really cool. Also in this case, we have an Axis versus Axis matchup, which again isn't something that we see at all and is something that um, is again interesting in these tournament in this tournament specifically because people have to play you know the division they've chosen throughout so we're, we're actually going to see a lot more like allied versus allied and axis versus axis and it's going to be really really cool bring some new dynamic and uh, bring us something a little bit different so let's have a look at uh, the units going down here so on this side corbo he's going to be having like the pack 41 girly here there's going to be uh, some recon infantry with a command with that some force megas for the mid force megas a little bit further down and two force megas for the bottom so a very high reliance on these uh, Volschmjägers so far from Corbo, and I mean it's it's going to be the case because it's the third Volschmjäger after all. Um, they don't get a lot of cheap infantry that they can spam until uh, later on. On the side of Uermen, I would expect him to be making uh, use of the 20 mils. So he's got the SBW 222 here, and there's a Befell Panzer 2C behind it. There's also going to be a couple units of Panzergrenz with a command there and an AT gun. Another unit further back. More Panzergrenz for the very top side. It's going to be Panzergrenz in a half track um, plus some infantry uh, recon and also the uh, Befell Panzer 2C. So, yeah, a couple 20 mils. No 259s, which is strange. It looks like, honestly, Ehrman's relying on uh, these Befell Panzer 2Cs for command in a lot of cases, but I mean, we'll have to sort of have a look directly at where the units are going when the map actually starts um, because that will tell us the purpose of these Panzer 2s and, and where they're going to be used on the map. So, off we go. And uh, it looks like the 222 is heading down the bottom side. I actually quite like that a lot. Um, it will definitely help deal with like Volschmjäger squads early on. And it's interesting to see a Storch coming out of Corbo, a recon aircraft there at the start. And this Storch being two star is actually going to be quite hard to force back with just machine guns. So in order to stop this from being a threat and stopping um, Corbo from spotting Ehrman's forces, he's going to have to rely on AA or maybe even a fighter in phase A, which would be quite an expensive investment just to take out that, hel um, not helicopter, aircraft. <laughs> Still got that mistake going <laughs> from playing too much war game, guys. Um, but yeah, the thing is, that's what makes these uh, recon aircraft actually pretty good 
is they have like their, their 60 points and in order to counter them properly especially with like an aircraft you have to spend over 100 now on this bottom side or top side even wow really nice kill there really really nice kill for Corbo the three star pack 41 Gerlich not hitting them or not missing at all going to be taking out a Panzer Grenadier in a half track early on that is a very expensive loss for Ermen and honestly with the limited availability of infantry early um, that could make things very difficult we do see a HS129 coming in um, on the side of Corbo here he's going to be going for the shot onto the Befell Panzer 2C Oh, nice. Very nice indeed. I think Corvo there microed the cannon, um, so it didn't start firing until it got much closer. And he might be able to do the same on this bottom side. Is he going to be going for this before Panzer 2C as well? Still flying it about. It looks like the Storch is heading over here. Might be able to see it. Oh, he's going to be going for the 222. Here we go. He opens up with the main gun. Doesn't manage to get the job done, but does force it back for the time being. Now these force makers on the bottom side here, they have been used um, just defensively. He's put them on to return fire and that means that your men's going to have to spot those in order to take them out. I like that he hasn't basically got too greedy with the HS129. He's not giving your men an excuse to bring in a fighter at this moment because that would likely take down this Storch as well and could cost him quite dearly. So yeah, I like that a lot. Pack 41, once again, it's going to get track will destroy onto the half track there. Now these combinations, I think they're like 55 points, because you've got, or 45 points, sorry, because you've got the 35 point Panzer Grand, you've got 10 point uh, half track, and losing those half tracks like that is really, really dreadful. Um, but Cooper MG just sort of sitting here, getting some ground for Corbo, so a plus one early on in his favor. Um, the speed troop could open up and, and take those out. They actually might end up getting spotted by the Forsham shaft shoots there here. Um, but the Panzergren should clean up the Kubel MG in and take back some ground for Urmen. And there is a mortar coming up onto this top side. Looks like that's going to be trying to deal with the Pack 41. Panzergren's though making short work of that and back to 50 50 we go. So Urmen has found himself an advantage in the middle with his Panzergren's. Um, getting into these buildings was very important just to solidify this center part um, But Corbo's done a great job of, of finding ground on this top side Now the pack 41 is being spotted due to the speed troops So that's exactly why he's going to be using the 257 here to mortar that Storch is still flying about it's going to get caught by the pack 41 Gerlich here I think it's in line of sight Yep, will be for a little bit longer, but your men just going to be reversing that out of there. Doesn't want to maintain that range, otherwise he could find that being dead very quickly. 8 AP versus 4 armor. Uh, max range, it's a pretty high uh, chance of penetration. The Mortifier finally coming in. I feel like Gurmen once that pack 41's pinned down, will be able to use the half track here quite aggressively. Does have a fast move command coming through. Pack 41, they're going to be forced to fall back there. Speed through did open up eventually. I like that uh, your men tried to catch that Pack 41. Uh, but uh, Corbo knows better than to let that happen. So no kill onto the AT gun just yet. There is two units of Falsham Jaegers coming up uh, to help out. There's also an L6 on the way, uh, which is interesting. It looked like um, Corbo had maybe been sitting on quite a few points here actually. Um, because that's quite a large investment, 245 point infantry squads and an L6 and whatever this is. That's crazy. I think that's also probably Falschmjägers at this point, just lower veteran ones. We have 4 minutes and uh, 35 seconds till phase B. The phase A of the 12th SS is, is mainly reliant on these 20 Morto cannons, um, or like the Boiter Cromwell or Boiter Firefly, depending on the map. In this case, the 20 mils are definitely the way to go, since they can chew through a lot of the 3rd Falsham Jaegers units uh, without having too much that can really counter them. So, yes, there is like the Pack 41s, but as long as you get the mortar on target, for example, um, you should be able to get rid of those and advance with your 20 mils and kill off the Falsham Jaegers very easy. 
Um, the Panzer L6 though is a very nice choice. It does uh, deal with half tracks and uh, the 20 more auto cannon units quite well. Um, so in this case, um is going to need his own AT gun really if he wants to deal with those effectively. Chaff shoots are here. They are running forwards on the main road here. Look at that. Sprinting up. They'll eventually find the Panzergrenz here, although they are going to be pinned down themselves. This Pack 41 going to be a little bit careful. Doesn't want to get too close to the speed through, but uh, with the L6 coming down the road and opening up, I don't think that speed through is going to be alive much longer. Now, once that L6 gets involved with these Panzergrenz, that's uh, definitely going to help out the engagement. But the 257, keeping things pinned down, there is an AT gun on the way. I like the response here. Boy to Cromwell as well. Quite an expensive investment, but with the the show of all of that infantry on that top side, um, it, it makes sense. It looks like these Volsham Jaegers, uh, they've got into the ideal range to cut down the Panzergrenfuhrer. And uh, let's see if they find the kill. Oh, just going to get away with it, I think. Yeah, man. If he keeps them on the run, then he should be okay. But Panzergren's really going to suffer in this engagement, at least. You can see these Volsham Jaegers opening up now. They're going to get pinned down so damn quickly. Like, this HE at that range is just absolutely crazy. It's, it's 14 HE at, like, 300 meter range. And, and that is scary. Very scary indeed. Now, the L6 has just got very aggressive here. And, oh, wow. These are some crazy losses for Ehrman. I love the choice of his units, but I can't help but think he's not microing them very well. Like, losing his uh, pack there before it unloads is a big, big deal. And now, he's lost his half-track mortar as well and that kind of leaves this boy to Cromwell open to being killed off by the L6 at close range. If Corbo just like fast move this into the boy to Cromwell he could easily kill that and I think that's what he's going to do. You can see him starting to move it back in that direction and he might just try and charge it down. We'll have to be a little bit careful of the Panzergrenz but uh, oh yeah of course he has the HS129 that can do the job so that's what he's going to do. Corbo picking up that Cromwell and that makes you wonder whether or not UMN should have invested some in some AA or at least a fighter by now in order to counter the damage that this HS129 has done already throughout this game. But yeah, losing the AT gun there, big, big loss because now the L6 is really free to do its work. And we're nearly at a plus two, honestly. Uh, Panzergrenz are going to be found by the Fulsham Scharfschützer. And they're now pinned as well. This L6 just makes very short work of infantry squads. HS129 coming back into the bottom side is going to pick up the 222 this time. Let's see if Corbo goes for a kill onto the Panzer 2C as well. Because if he can find that, that would just be absolutely devastating for Ehrman. Really, really solid play here from, from Corbo throughout this game. Some of the Fulsham Jaegers have been caught out in questionable positions, but it's not particularly going to matter at the moment, especially with this push on the top side here coming through from Corbo. The HS129 doesn't have line of sight. Oh, nearly. That was certainly a maneuver. <laughs> Imagine if he'd done that roll and got the kill. That would have been absolutely awesome to watch, but not today. So Panzergren is going to be opening up onto the Fulcher Gears. Now the Panzergren of course still do have the 9HE on their 2MG42s. So the Fulcher Gears can get pinned in the open quite easily. That's what you can see happening here and also here with the 2v1. So Fulcher Gears, you know, they're not invincible. Yes, they're very strong, but um, yeah, not invincible at all. ME109 G6R6 has been invested upon by Corbo. And up here, oh no, not again. L6, I think, was so close there to killing this 251 while the Panzergrenz are inside, but the yeah, men saw it. They were going to lose the half track again. Now the L6 can't really go to too much further because otherwise it would just get Panzer Fausted. Another HS129 coming in. This one's a fresh one, one star as well should help with the accuracy a little. Opening up with its guns. 
And that is a dead panda too. Also going to be taking out these half tracks. Oh my. That was close. That was very close indeed. And finally, ME109 G6R6 has been purchased. Now HS129 is going to pull into that engagement. I like that a lot. Now it's up to this ME109 G6R6 to try and do some damage. And ME109 action. Going at each other. I would expect Corbo to maybe purchase himself another fighter just so that he continues uh, to control the air throughout this game because it's pretty important for his strategy as a third Volshimega. But at the moment, he's not doing too bad with this ME109. His ME109 is out turning your men's by the looks of things. It always seems to be getting a shot off. When Urmens does not. Now Corbo just getting his out of there. Because he is running low on fuel. Is he going to lose it because of that? Oh, don't think he will. Or maybe he will. It took ages to get out of there, but no, it, not eventually. I think the ME109 had run out of... Uh, some ammunition there on one of its guns so it wasn't as effective but the second ME109 G6R6 coming in and wow that is an interesting investment especially with how things are on the ground right now I mean there is a SBW AB41 coming in and the Panzer L6 oh Panzer Grenz though gonna hit ammo storage hit the uh, Panzer or uh, the L6 there I mean these two squads or these two uh, Units, it can do a lot of damage to these Panzer guns very quickly. They have line of sight, uh, but they are going to remain hidden uh, from, you know, good optics, because the uh, recon cars aren't as effective. Now on this top side, L6, uh, is, I think it's trying to uh, fire position onto the Panzer guns there, but uh, with the Befell Panzer IV coming in, well, that's going to be a dead L6. So a plus three on the board for Corbo, definitely getting a big advantage. The ammo storage here actually onto this L6 has meant it ran out of ammo very fast indeed. But yeah, investment in the second ME109 I think was maybe a bit overkill for Ermen. He definitely needed to, to bring in some stuff um, that could kill off these vehicles that Corbo are using, that is using. So taking out that L6 right is a really good start. Now if he can get his Panzergrenz to spot the Volschmegas for him, then he can continue to use his Panzer IV and push back on that top side. Um, in the mid, it's it's all about, again, just getting a unit that can deal with the L6 and the AB41, and then having infantry there to make use of that fire support. On this bottom side, Panzergrenz still winning out versus Volschmegas, uh, but the ME109 G6 R6 is going to have something to say about that. Now that is a one-star one, so that's a second ME109 for Corbo. Maybe going to try and bait an air engagement and uh, take out Urmen's forces. Now the AB41 has just got very aggressive here. It's going to bump into the 231. Now the AB41 has a natural advantage due to having slightly more AP. But I feel like this is going to be a lot of bounces before we see any significant damage done. ME109 going to be trying to come in with the strafing run to help out there. But uh, Urmen really needs to get his act together if he wants to uh, bring back this game. Like, it was only around a thousand points when I was talking about the strategies that he that he should have done rather than the ME109. Um... And that's fine because you, if you bring it back to like a plus one or a plus two, you don't bleed out too many more points. Uh, but in this case, while well, we've moved to a plus four, Corbo's getting his forces really far forwards. His Panzergrenz actually got surrendered up here by these Volschmiegers. And that is a big deal because it basically stops the Panzer IV from moving forwards aggressively. And the recon is not there for Urmen, so he doesn't have that to use. Now another Befell Panzer IV coming in. Taking out these SBW AB41s is very important right now. 
And UMN finding the kill onto these aircraft is also very important. But this ME109 is being caught. That's going to go down. UMN replies. So an ME109 on both sides. Can he make this second ME109 worth it? We'll have to wait and see. The HS129 is trying to get out of there. Maybe his ME109 can get the advantage this time around. But with that HS129 coming in, it has pinned down the Befell Panzer IV. And now this SBW AB41 is just going to surrender the SBW. It's charging down the Befell Panzer IV. It's going to be bailed out though. Shows its side armor. SBW232 going to get the job done. Well, Bo, very close actually to, to losing this ME109. Uh, honestly, it looks like Ermen had the advantage there. So, interesting stuff. But uh, look at this map. <laughs> it could not be more blue right now. This is actually pretty ridiculous. Ermen does have a few units up here, but uh, not going to be enough, really. Plus four ticking all the way up. And honestly, at this moment, I'm surprised that UMN has kept going. Like, after losing the ground on the bottom side here, that was a huge shift in this game. And uh, Corvo's just played extremely well, even taking down that fighter now. And that's probably the last fighter out of the 12th SS as well. So he has no more, like, aircraft to counter... But um, mistakes on the side of Ehrman in a sense that he lost too many units. And the Panzer IV went down on the top side there. So Ehrman's going to surrender. Yeah, Ehrman lost way too many units before they unloaded. That was, that, that, that's sort of, I guess not necessarily a rookie mistake. But but it's definitely a big mistake that you should fix in your in your play. Like even just taking care to unload early. So as to avoid that, because that was a lot of points he lost, and uh, maybe investing in those fighters earlier on. I don't know if he can get an ME, or he might not have an ME109 in phase A with the 12th SS. I'm not sure he will, because those two star ones are so much better. So he probably just has phase B fighters, and we saw both of them come out. So. Yeah, it's interesting. There wasn't really too much other than simply bringing in AA early on that Ehrman could have done about that HS129 Storch combo. Like, it was really, really well played from Corbo. Like, the Storch was just spotting its targets and the HS129 went to work. So, in the end, 1,600 kills to 475 losses. And of course, vice versa for Ehrman. In terms of these kills, the Pack 41 Gerlich there just popping all those half tracks. Really nice use of that AT gun. HS129 took out the Panzer 2C and the Beutekrummer and the 222 there. We see the L6, uh, that definitely went on a rampage on the top side, took out, what's that, 90 points worth of Panzer Grens and half tracks. Um, then we've got that Panzer Gren or pa Fortune Jaeger definitely showing what it's made of against these um, Panzer Grens. Um, these Fortunegas again doing very well there. Another L6 getting a few nice kills. HS129 gets another couple of kills in there as well. Fortunegas at the end there did manage to get the Panzer Faust into the side of the Panzer IV. Um, and then the ME109 engagements in terms of losses. Well, this ME109 G6R6 did take down the Storch in one of the ME109s, but the, with the third Fortunegas, there are so many fighters available that it's very, very hard to go head to head unless you start doing it earlier on and take advantage of of the player not having as many aircraft already because they can't afford them. And that's basically how you can manage against a sort of very aircraft-reliant division um, early on. Um, Boyd Cromwell only took out a Fulschenfuhrer before he got popped by the HS129. A couple of Pack 41s did go down in the end, but uh, yeah, just not many kills at all. Airmen. Interesting game. Congratulations to Corbe. We'll be moving on to round two. And uh, Eumen gets a second chance. Can be dropping down to the lower bracket. So, there you have it. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this video. Again, 
Um, I am planning to get two of these out a day where I can. Um, not every day, but most days. And I hope you guys are looking forward to that. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.